Hello, my name is Kevin Lee. In this video, I'm going to talk about some new features added to Java 8, which are Lambda expressions, method references, and default methods. At first, I'll explain what Lambda expressions are in Java 8. I'll give the basics and some examples, and we'll also talk about first class functions, then closure with providing um, some differences between the old way and using Lambda expressions. By the old way, I mean using anonymous classes and method references which make what you already have reusable. So all those methods um, in the libraries you have or in your own code can be reused. And default methods, uh, uh, in, it makes the objects created using lambda expressions um, you know, much more versatile then first class functions so i said i would talk about first class functions when i you know talk about lambda expressions and at this point i, I will revisit that and then um, make sure that what i said was correct stream api lambda expressions are good but stream api is great um, this is what makes lambda expressions much more useful it may change the way you think and the way you program and it will give you much more pleasure when you program. Finally, examples. So I'll give you, you know, quite a few examples and try to make it as, as practical as possible so it won't be just, you know, hello world kind of example. Okay. So let me begin with explaining what Lambda expressions are in Java 8. So Lambda expressions, not just Lambda expressions, but with method references are Java's way to support first class functions then what are the first class functions if a programming language has a first class function that means a function is a first class citizen then what is a first class citizen in a programming language it is an entity which can be passed as a parameter or can be returned as a result from a function can be assigned to a variable and can be stored in data structures so when i say function it's not just a function in the functional programming language. Well, in the functional programming language, a function means relation between set of input and set of output, which means if you give a, uh, a particular input, then you will always get the same output uh, for that particular input. But I'm not just talking about that, but subroutine. So um, it's a set of you know, instructions performing some task so you know in many languages is called differently for example function method procedure and so on so I'm talking about uh, subroutine and in Java a function is a method and it is not a first-class citizen so you cannot pass a method method as a parameter you cannot get a method as a result from uh, another method and you cannot assign it to a variable you cannot store in the data structures so what is the problems well it makes us hard to do functional style programming not functional programming in the pure functional programming languages but functional style programming in object-oriented programming languages so functional style programming using function objects and minimizing imperative programming code in order to produce highly reusable more testable more readable and more maintainable and concurrent code so first class citizen I mean the first class function is treating function um, as data so you cannot you, you can uh, pass data as a parameter and can get data as, as a result of you know some function and uh, can assign it to variables and you know can store in the data structures so uh, first class function means treating function uh, as data all right now to find out the problems I mean to to truly understand the, the problem we have and uh, find out some possible solutions then 
um, I think I'd better revisit what we usually do with imperative you know code so I'll give some examples I have a simple Java bean called product and this is very typical Java bean and and you know nothing special about this bean and I'm using Lombok to automatically generate getters and setters and I have a simple utility class which has a method to conveniently create an instance of big decimal now uh, I have a list of products and let's just think about what we usually do so I want to get the names of product all the products there and uh, if we have that kind of problem, what we usually do is iterate over the list and then get every single element stored in that list, then do something on it, right? I'll do exactly the same thing using this for each loop. So get every product uh, stored in the products list and then what I want to do, getting product name. So get name and then I need to store the names somewhere else. so create a list of string called product names and all right then I need to store it there so product names add all right done uh, let's print it out to see if I did it correctly run it yeah I've got the names of all the products so these are the names I put some simple letters to easily distinguish one product from another so done now I have another problem now I want to get the prices of all the products then okay now I know I need to store the result somewhere so create list of big decimal because the big decimal is a type of price so let's call it prices same thing array list and here product same thing, you know, looping through that products and get every single product. And here I need to get product price, store it in the prices list. And then to see the result, print it out, run it. Yep, I've got the prices here, right? It's the same. Good. Let's just think about what I did here. And and the problems I had well problem I had here was getting the name of products right getting all the names of the all the products and here is uh, getting the prices of all the products and instead of focusing on the actual problem what I did was create a list of string and then iterate over these products get every single element and then take the name of the product and then put in this product names and here is the same right so I could not focus on it because you know collection is not smart enough to iterate itself and then you know giving me what I want so I have to tell you know every step of the way to get it so what I did was you know how to do things to get what I want instead of you know telling just what I want okay well this is bad because you know whenever you need you have the same kind of problem you need to write code like this and uh, think about this whenever you I mean after you write this this kind of code then you probably need to read many times right once you write code you know you you need to read it many times later then whenever you get the code like this and then you cannot easily figure out what you know this piece of code does what you need to do to figure it out then it is reading every line by line and then understand what this code does so here you need to understand why why I created this you know list of string here right you, you wouldn't know until you get this point, right? So this is really bad. You cannot easily understand that, you know, what the code does and then which means, you know, is this code has poor maintainability 
and uh, it's hard to read and here it's just simple case it does one thing then you have this much code right so if you have like a not just one thing but if you need to do more than just one thing or two two or three different things here then it would become much more complex well you may think oh that doesn't look so bad right because why 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 would you say that because you know you've got already used to it right so you don't feel it but that doesn't mean it's good and you will understand when i talk about stream api later okay so just you know bear with me and so okay then how can you improve this you know how can you have a better solution well think about what i did here what i did here was getting each product and take the name of each product right here is getting getting the product and take the price which means i actually mapped product to string i mapped product to big decimal right mapping product to string which is the name mapping product to big decimal which is which is the price that's actually what i did there so i can probably create a method called uh, map which does mapping mapping from one type to another so what i need to do is um, i want to make it reusable so you know it, it can be used for any type not just product but any type so then what we can use is generic method we can create generic method to do that so here what it takes is list of something right that something is very well unknown right it can be any type so t list of t it takes that and then what it returns is list of well we are doing mapping you know so converting one type to another so it takes some type t and returns another type r okay that's the method signature and the method body would look like well it's simple first we need to solve that you know boilerplate code part so do this now result should be you know r type some type r so do that and let's call it result and here i'm not dealing with the product anymore i'm dealing with some type t so change it to t and then that price products would be list and finally return the result okay now i need to solve the most important part here and that's actually the part that solves the problem well what can i do here i mean i cannot or I, as i said i'm not dealing with the product anymore i'm dealing with just some type r so it can be anything i cannot just call get name or get price then what you can do is let I me mean, think about this what if i have something can convert some type t to another type r right so what i can have here is a uh, function object that map one type to another so i actually created a function type like this one function one and which takes one type and then or i'll show you what it looks like so i have the interface called function one and it, it has only one method and signature looks like this so it takes some type t and returns another type r okay oh why don't i use that interface instead of using what i made before so okay yeah, that type so let's call it mapper so this interface does mapping so let's just call apply what i pass is some type t so as you can see it takes some type t and returns another type r okay all right then if i just use this map method then solve the same problem that i had so here i want to get the product name so what i can do is okay i, I pass the products list and then create well this is an interface so what i can do is i can create an anonymous class object to solve the problem so this well i have to specify the type right so and i want to get the names of products so let's say string and write the code here i can put 
the, the code that actually solves the problem. So here my problem is getting name done. Okay, solve the problem. Let's print it out. <clears throat> so okay, if I run this code, yeah, I've got the same result, right? Alright, what about the second problem? Getting the price. Need to change it to big decimal. And here I need to say get price. Run it. Make it bigger. Okay, I've got the same result, right? So good. Well, it looks better, right? Because I can focus on only the solving problem and I don't need to do, you know, iteration and creating another list, list and well, it's slightly better, but still, I mean, what about this part? You know, you just repeated that type information and well, what about creation of this anonymous class object? Why, why do I need to do that? Because, you know, Java doesn't support the first class. Okay. Java A supports now. So Java didn't support first class function. So I, this is the code solves the, solves the problem, but I cannot pass this code. What I need to do, because you know this is function, right? So I cannot pass the function, uh, actually method, I cannot pass, pass the method as a parameter. So I have to create an object, right? So that's why I created an anonymous class object. And this part is actually ceremony. Ceremony is something you don't like, but you have to do before you do what you, what, what you want. Right? So something you don't like, but you have to do before you do what you actually want. Right? Like that. I want this one, but you cannot simply do that. To do that, you have to write, you know, uh, anonymous class object. So that's ceremony. Ceremony is not good. Well, it, you know, it's not good to focus on the actual problem, right? You have to write that code there. So whenever you look at this code, well, it might be slightly better than, but you know, surrounded code is still distracting you, right? And so, uh, prevent you from focusing on the actual problem. Okay, that's the old way, but good news is, well, this is what this video is all about, right? What I'm about to say is, so now you can solve this problem very easily you know, by focusing on the actual problem using lambda expressions. So I use lambda expressions to solve that's exactly the same problem, right? See what I do here. So yeah, call the map method and pass the products and product. And what do you want? Product name. So get name. Uh, sorry, typo. Get name. Done. Run it. I've got the same result as you know all <clears throat> the previous ones, right? So simple. What about the second problem? Well, easy. Now get price done. Run it. Same result as the other ones. So, well, even if you you know you know nothing about lambda expressions. You can easily understand this lambda expression, right? Because, well, you can just read it. You get the product and then take the name. That's it. So simple. That's what you want, right? You want to map product to string. So simple. This is really simple, you know, concise and elegant solution. And uh, now, okay, I'll give you the details of lambda expressions, right? And, you know, as I explain further, you, know, you will get something better, better than, you know, just this code, okay? All right. I'll give the details of lambda expressions. All right. 